All right, this video is going to help you get a better grasp on the difference between position time graphs and speed time graphs because there are differences between the two that students often confuse. All right, so, but if you're paying close attention, you will not have a problem telling the difference between the two. Uh, the first thing you want to do when you look at a graph is, first of all, read the title so that you know, get the main idea of what the graph is talking about. Then you want to look at the axes, okay, and determine whether you're dealing with a position time graph or a speed time graph. All right, so on, in both cases, both graphs are going to have time on the x-axis. So when you read the graph, you can read it as something is happening as time is passing. Okay, because as we know, time never stops. Okay. So on the x-axis, uh, usually it'll start at time zero. Okay, so there's the start of something, and then time will pass as you go along the x-axis. Now, on a position time graph, the position is generally going to be the distance. All right, and it's going to have some units like meters, centimeters, kilometers, miles, or some distance. And as time passes, your distance is either going to increase, decrease, or stay the same. Uh, on a speed time graph, it's telling you how fast you're going at a certain point of time. So as time is passing, what is happening to your speed? Are you traveling at a constant speed? Are you speeding up? Or are you slowing down? And we're going to talk about what all those graphs look like. So let's first talk about the distance time graph. Okay. On a distance time graph, remember the distance is going to be some length or some measurement of length on the y-axis and time is going to be plotted on the x-axis. So let's look at an object that first of all is not moving. Okay, So on a distance time graph, you can see here as time is passing, the distance of this object is going to be the same. So let's say that this distance was, I don't know, let's say one mile away. So at any given time on this graph, the distance of this object does not change. So we can say this object is at rest. This object is not moving. So on a position time graph, when you see a straight line, a straight horizontal line, this means that the object is at rest. Now, let's... But objects at rest are kind of boring. So let's talk about objects that are moving. Okay. So you can see here in this graph that as time is passing, you know, increasing to the right, the distance inc is increasing constantly with time. Okay. And so when you see this line is straight, okay, it's diagonal, but it's straight. So this means that our object is traveling at a constant speed. Okay, because at every interval of time, the same distance is being covered, and the distance from where we start is getting further away. Okay, now, if the line, let, in this case, these objects are both traveling at constant speeds, because you can see that they're straight, but this dashed line here is moving away at a higher speed. So you could see, for example, if this were um, some point in time right here, okay, you could see that at this point, this object had only gone this far, but the object at that same amount of time, this object at that same amount of time had gone um, a farther distance. So you could say that the steeper the line, the higher the speed in a distance time graph. Okay. This um, one right here, which we will see, the distance is increasing, okay, and uh, and when oh, you'll remember that the dis the line we're graphing here is the speed, and di speed is the distance divided by the time. So this line is actually showing us the speed of the object, and you can see here, our object is going at a constant speed, and then it starts to increase in speed because you can see here that the slope of the line increases. And you'll remember from the last video that in a distance time graph, the slope of the line is equal to the average speed. Okay? So if you want you just calculate the rise over the run. But we're right now we're just getting a general sense of how to read the graphs. Now which brings us to oh well actually let's look at a few examples here, just a couple. Alright. So right here we have a distance 
time graph. This is our distance is measuring in yards and our time is going to be in seconds. Okay, so let's say we have, I don't know, person A here and person B. Okay, you can see at zero seconds they both are, you know, they haven't gone anywhere. So you can see person A after one second has gone a little bit farther distance. It looks like this is two, four, six, eight, ten yards. So each one of these little lines right here is two yards. So you can see that after one second, person B has gone only two yards. But person A, in that same amount of time, has gone a little bit over four yards. So the person A, you can see that this line is steeper. They are moving faster, or object A. I just said people, but this could be objects, cars, uh, any moving objects. Okay, so this line is steeper. Uh, this graph is just showing you that both of these uh, objects started at a distance of 10 yards away and then as time passed they got even farther away. You can see again uh, this was A and B here that A has a steeper uh, slope and therefore has a faster speed. Okay, uh, And then you can just kind of interpret what's going on in, this, in these graphs uh, if you want to pause and take a stab at you know what do you think is happening in these graphs. So let's look at speed uh, time graphs. All right. Now, in a speed time graph, you're looking at the speed of an object as time is passing. So you can see here that as time is passing, uh, our speed is staying the same. Now, because let's say this was a speed of, I don't know, we just, just make something up here. Let's say this was a speed of 50 miles per hour. Okay, so at any given time, our object is moving at 50 miles an hour, here, 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 at any time. So this means that our object is moving at a constant speed. Right. Now, remember, on the position time graph, this meant that our object was at rest because at all, when a position time graph, as time is passing, the distance is not changing. So this object is at rest. Now, in a speed time graph, this is different. This object is not at rest. This object is moving. In fact, it's moving at a speed of, I wrote here, 50 miles. It's just showing you that at, it's moving at a constant speed. Okay, We'll look at these side by side to give you a better idea. But you have to look at the axes and to decide whether you're looking at a speed time graph or a position time graph. So right here, we can see that as our time is passing, that our speed is increasing. So when you see a line that's slanted up to the right like this in a speed time graph, our object is accelerating. All right, so because as time passes, its speed is increasing. In this case, we could say that the object, as time passes, its speed is decreasing. So we might say that it's decelerating or maybe it's, or you could say it's accelerating in the negative direction. All right, so let's look at a couple examples, okay? Or let's look at them side by side. All right, in a position time graph, okay? If our graph looks like this, again, as time is passing, our distance is staying the same. So this is showing you an object at rest. And if you're being a good student, you might want to copy this down to make sure you really have a good handle on it. Okay, now here, let's say our let's say our line looked like this. Okay, so as time is passing, the distance is increasing. So this object is getting uh, farther away from us. All right. So in this case, all right, we would say that um, as time increases, the distance is increasing. All right. And so, and it's a straight line, so we're saying that it's traveling at a constant speed, all right? If, if for some reason the line kind of looked like this, all right, the distance is still kind of increasing over time, but this would be a non-constant speed, okay? If the line is straight, that would be a constant speed, all right? So this means we're kind of going away from our uh, point of origin or where we started. All right, if we look, if our line slopes down like this, okay, this means that uh, it's getting closer or it's returning to us because as time is passing, the distance is decreasing. So time's passing, 
So our object is getting closer uh, to where it started. Now, so this is uh, right here. We have our uh, distance is increasing. And here we have our distance our, our is decreasing. Okay, so as time passes, uh, our object is getting closer to us. Now, in a speed time graph, okay, now in a speed time graph, if your graph looks like this, this means that our object is moving at a constant speed, okay? Constant speed. Now, you'll notice that over here, on a distance time graph, a constant speed was a slanted line that looks like this, okay? Because as our that just means we're jumping at a constant speed, either or a constant speed either going away or a constant speed come here or or returning. Or but if our line is curved, then it's a it's not a constant speed. Now, coming back to the speed time graphs, if your graph looks like this, okay, that means that you are accelerating. You are increasing in speed. Here you are accelerating. Okay, your speed is increasing. And here, if you are going, your, if your graph looks like this, you are decelerating. Okay, or your speed is decreasing. All right, let's look at an example. All right, so you can get a good handle on what's going on because you will have to interpret graphs. All right, this is showing you, this graph is showing you a train going from uh, someplace called Swansea to London. All right, and if you're looking at the graph carefully, you can see that London is 200, our units is given in miles here, 200 miles away from Swansea. All right, and our time is given in hours. Okay, now if we're paying close attention, we can see let's, this is 8 o'clock and this is 9 o'clock. All right, and let's see what intervals of time our x-axis is broken up into. We know that halfway between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock is 8.30. So this is about 8.30 right here. And halfway between 8 o'clock and 8.30 would be 8.15. All right, so it looks like each segment is going to be 15 minutes. All right, so there are some questions associated with this handout, okay? And let's look at what's going on in this handout, all right? So this is a, first of all, a position time graph because we see here that we are have our distance and time. This is measuring how far away we are. So let's look what's happening. So right here in the first 30 minutes, all right, our distance was increasing. In 30 minutes, this train went 20 miles. And then for 15 minutes, the train was still going at 50, it was still at 20 miles away. So right here, this is where the train stopped, okay? The train stopped. Because you can see for, from 8.30 to 8.45, the train didn't go anywhere. Its distance stayed at 20 miles. And then the train went traveled again for 15 more minutes, and in that 15 minutes, it went another 20 miles, up to 40, and then it stopped again, and then it went another 15, it went for another 15 minutes, and then it stopped again. So you can see right here, between Swansea and London, the train stopped one, two, three, four, five times, and each time it stopped for 15 minutes, except for right here, where it stopped for 30 minutes, okay? And you can see, because it's a position time graph, as it's going up like this, that means you're getting further away. Flat means stopped. Now, let's say, for example, uh, you had a speed time graph, and it kind of looks, or a position time graph, and it looks like this, okay? This is sort of like when you go to the store. So you went to the store, you were there for some period of time, and then you came home. This is in a uh, position time graph. So go over this video. Make sure you have a good idea of what's going on and rewatch it if you need to.